Despite being a long-standing standard, RS-232 connectivity still appears on some industrial automation equipment specifications due to its reliability and simplicity for particular legacy systems and applications. In this video, you will learn what the RS-232 protocol is and what it stands for. You will explore the types of connectors used in this standard. You will get acquainted with the RS-232 pin diagram. You will understand how the RS-232 facilitates data transmission and reception alongside the various devices utilizing this protocol. You will grasp different types of cables associated with the RS-232 standard. Also, you will realize the advantages and disadvantages of using this protocol for exchanging data. Finally, you will discover application examples where the RS-232 standard is being used. Okay, let's get started. RS-232 is an acronym that signifies the recommended standard 232. Nowadays, RS-232 is recognized under the name TIA-232, with TIA representing Telecommunications Industry Association Recommendation 232. RS-232 functions as a serial data transfer standard. In simple terms, it's a communication method for exchanging data. Serial data transmission refers to sending data bit by bit in a consecutive order across the communication path. RS-232 standard commonly utilizes the sub-miniature connectors known as DB9 and DB25. The DB9 connector features 9 pins, while the DB25 connector has 25 pins, each serving a specific signal and control functions. Many manufacturers adopted 9-pin serial connectors for RS-232 interfaces instead of the larger 25-pin connectors. It was because 9-pin connectors are more compact, cost-effective, and provide enough pins for most connections. Because of these reasons, let's explore the RS-232 DB9 pinout in this video tutorial. Pin 1, the data carrier detect or DCD, indicates the presence of a carrier signal. Pin 2, the receive data or RXD, carries data from the receiver to the transmitter. Pin 3, the transmit data or TXD, carries data from the transmitter to the receiver. Pin 4, the data terminal ready or DTR, indicates the readiness of the transmitter to communicate. Pin 5, the signal ground or GND, is the ground reference for all signals. Pin 6, the data set ready or DSR, indicates the readiness of the receiver to communicate. Pin 7, the request to send or RTS, is a signal from the transmitter indicating intent to send data. Pin 8, the clear to send or CTS, is a signal from the receiver indicating readiness to receive data. Pin 9, the ring indicator or RI, indicates an incoming call signal. Due to limited use in modern RS-232 setups, the functions of the DCD and RI pins are not discussed further in this tutorial. Now let's dive into the working principle of the RS-232 protocol in data exchange. Imagine two devices needing to communicate with each other. Simplify the scenario. One device transmits while the other exclusively receives. In reality, both devices engage in sending and receiving, but understanding the one-way communication aids in comprehending both directions. The transmitter generates data which needs to be sent to the receiver. This transmission occurs via a physical connection, typically a wire. On the transmitter's end, the pin is known as transmit data or TXT, and on the end of the receiver, it is known as receive data or RXT. Connecting these pins allows for data transmission from the transmitter to the receiver. For specific applications, the RS-232 standard emphasizes the necessity of verifying receiver presence. But how is this requirement fulfilled? RS-232 designers included a control wire to indicate the receiver's presence to the transmitter. This link is termed data terminal ready or DTR on the transmitter's end and data set ready or DSR on the receiver's end. Once the link is connected and the receiver sets the proper voltage, data can securely flow from the transmitter to the receiver. Another issue is when the transmitter operates at a high speed, the receiver may fail to keep pace, leading to potential data loss. How to fix this? 
To address this issue, the designers introduced an extra control wire to enable coordination between the transmitter and receiver during data transfer. This link is called the request to send or RTS on the transmitter side and clear to send or CTS on the receiver side. It allows the receiver to signal when data transmission should pause or resume. This method of using a send pause signal is known as a hardware flow control. Software flow control involves sending specific packets, X on and X off, to regulate data flow. When the receiver is prepared to accept additional data, it sends an X on packet to the transmitter, indicating that it is ready to receive data. Conversely, when the receiver needs to pause the data flow, it sends an X off packet to the transmitter, signaling that it must stop sending data until further notice. In a basic RS-232 data transfer setup, the transmit and receive pins, TXD and RXD, must be connected between two devices. A ground wire is also necessary to ensure proper functionality and accuracy. Plus, these free links facilitate successful communication between the RS-232 devices. In RS-232 communication, data is transmitted through a wire as a signal. The signal includes a sequence of voltage levels that encode the data, with the voltage levels being positive or negative relative to a zero-volt reference. The RS-232 standard transmits a binary zero using positive voltage. Historically, a positive voltage level is known as a spacing, corresponding to logic zero. On the other hand, the RS-232 protocol sends a binary 1 using a negative voltage. Here, the negative voltage level has been called the marking corresponding to logic 1. In RS-232 communication, a standard frame comprises 11 bits. It starts with a zero-valued start bit, followed by 8 data bits. After this, a parity bit is included for error detection, ending with a one-valued stop bit, which lowers the voltage. RS-232 is a specification that ensures serial data transmission between a primary system, data terminal equipment or DTE, and a secondary system, data communications equipment or DCE. RS-232 cables come in different varieties, including straight-through cables, non-modem cables, and crossover cables. If you want to connect a DTE device to a DCE device, a straight-through cable is necessary as it aligns the same pins on both connectors. When connecting two DTE devices, a non-modem cable is used. Transmit data from one device connects to receive data of the other, and receive data connects back to transmit data. The signal ground connects both ends. If hardware flow control is used, lines like RTS to CTS, DTR to DSR, and vice versa can also be crossed. In RS-232, the crossover cable's internal connections mirror those of a non-modem cable, with the main difference being that a crossover cable is used to connect two DCE devices. Typically, the DC equipment connector is designed with the male housing for connecting to female pins, while DTE connectors use female housing interfaces with male pins. It's time to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of the RS-232 standard. RS-232, a widely used and budget-friendly standard, boosts compatibility with numerous devices and cables designed to support its protocol. The simplicity of RS-232 is the key benefit, ensuring ease of use and straightforward implementation. Also, RS-232 allows for the transmission and reception of data simultaneously, thanks to its full duplex communication capability. On the other hand, the RS-232 standard allows data to be transmitted at a speed of up to 19.2 kilobits per second, significantly slower compared to modern data speeds. Another drawback of the RS-232 protocol involves the limitation that cables can extend up to approximately 50 feet. Also, radio frequency interference, or RFI, and electromagnetic interference, or EMI, often affects RS-232 cables, leading to potential signal loss or degradation.
In the realm of industrial automation, the RS-232 interface is a prevalent choice offering reliable point-to-point -point connectivity over short distances at lower speeds. This standard is commonly utilized in some PLCs to facilitate communication with devices like human-machine interfaces, industrial PCs, motor drives, robots, CNC machines, vision systems, and similar industrial equipment. If you have a unique experience dealing with the RS-232 standard in industrial automation, please share it with us in the comment section. Also, if you found this video helpful, please encourage us by liking the video, subscribing to our channel, and pressing the bell icon so you can get notifications whenever we publish new out-of-the-oven videos. This way, you keep motivating us to produce more informative videos.